Oh, uh, we need to do like this tap dance routine so we can synchronize the video <laughs> to the audio. Oh, we could try that. Three, two, two one. one. Imagine that just snapped in half right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're on the last episode of The Batch. <laughs> We're all very tired. There's been difficulties. <laughs> we literally smashed a table in half. Right, well, guys, okay. I can hear a noise. Oh, it's just tap dancing. <laughs> Right. Right. Don't point at me. Every time we do one of these episodes, there'll be someone in the comments who says, wait, wait a what, minute. What are you guys using to advance the slides? Is that a Joy-Con? It is. It is a Joy-Con. And so I thought, well, why don't we do an episode on that? Why don't we talk about that? Yeah. Because, like, you know, people are like, why do you do that? And the reason is because I am You're a cheapskate. Cheap <laughs> yeah, I am absolutely a cheapskate. <laughs> The literally the first conference talk I ever gave. Uh, I was like, I'm not spending money on slide clicker. That's money I'd rather spend on other things. Uh, what have I got to do? The th do you know what I used? I used a wireless mouse. <laughs> yeah, and, sure. But do you know, wireless mice like to be on a surface. They're not very ergonomic to hold in your hand. And right? also, the thing at the bottom starts going crazy of like, <laughs> where, where is the floor? Only four like people it. have lost eyesight like... in the audience so this yeah. time. So that, everyone was like, didn't know what you said. All we saw was <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Um, so then the next year, I used a Wiimote. And mm. a special piece of software to make all that work, because it's a special piece of kit that works in a special yeah. way. Not this, though. No, I think I remember at the start, we discovered this is Bluetooth. It can just connect to your computer. Cool. And then you still need a special piece of, or we used a piece of software to map the buttons, because it's a normal joy pad, I guess. Yeah. Map it to keyboard buttons. Yes. But you don't need to do that. Not on the web, because we have the GamePad API. An API I both love and loathe. And we're going to talk about why. And I'm going to have a look at the code that we actually use in this slide deck in yes. order to make it work. Because uh, I think there's a few interesting little techniques in there that we could talk I'm about. I'm glad that you call <laughs> that snippet interesting oh, techniques. So I've rewritten it for oh. the sake of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> look, so it's not the original one we wrote. It'll be interesting to see if you can spot the differences, because it's, it's not that different. Um, it's, it's fundamentally right. the same. Anyway, first, this is the GamePad API. Yeah. There you go. Navigator. Just give me, give me them gamepads, and it yep. doesn't even need permission. Ah, but your modern browsers won't show the gamepad unless the gamepad is used while you have the True. page open. So even if you've got 20 gamepads connected, this is going to return none until you touch one of them. Like, isn't it even, button. I'm trying to remember, isn't it even a holy array? <sighs> yeah, mate. <laughs> so it, the idea is that it should, like, the gamepads won't move in this array. Yeah, they have. They have a fixed order. They have basically a fixed ID. But they won't be there, as you said, until you actually touch one of the buttons yep. or the, 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 the analog sticks. And the, I think this is a bad part of the API. I, I think we have Just better give them ways to the... give them an ID. Do you know what? They have an ID, but it's non, not unique. <laughs> which is funny for ID, which stands for yeah. identifier. It's an identifier for that brand of controller. But if you have two of the same brand, then uh, anyway, Great. anyway. So you do this. Um, I've got over the fact of putting Boolean in dot .find. Yeah. I'm, I, I used it's to a be... pattern now. People, I, For me, I now look and it's like, oh, right, you're getting the truthy values. Yeah. I used to be against this because, like, what if they change Boolean to ha take two arguments? Now, this is going to, and they don't, no, I, they I just, can't anymore because of this. They can't anymore because of this. So do you know what? I've made my peace with, with this. And then, yeah, you get your axes, and you get your buttons, so your, an, an axe. A, a axe and my axe is uh, so you're going to get two of those for a analog stick. Yeah, because that's your X and your Y. So you've got two analog sticks, like your old uh, PlayStation controller or your Xbox controller. That's four. You're going to get four yeah. axes. I'm trying to remember. I think the the touchpads sometimes are exposed as axes as well, but not always. Oh, there's a a proposal for an extension to the spec which deals with the touchpad mm. the feature. On, on I don't think uh, Chrome supports it. I didn't look too much into that other than to know it exists. Here's a great site, gamepadtester.com. Yeah. Uh, and this is me with a PlayStation controller. You can see me pressing a bunch of buttons, uh, testing the sticks. Now, uh, the buttons have uh, a float attached to them, and that's for your triggers. Which, again, are an axis. Yeah, but it, can, it exposes them as buttons, which is interesting. Oh. 
Interesting. Uh, but the button has a float value. Yeah. The button has a, a state of all buttons do. They're just sometimes one and sometimes zero. But yeah. I guess these can be in between. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so the others are just going from zero to one. There, there is a pressed boolean. Uh, there is a um, touched boolean. So for some of your VR yeah. pads, where just resting your finger on the button is a thing it can pick up. So that right. is represented as well. Anyway. <sighs> Yes, this is what I was waiting for. Yeah. So your your way of actually making this work in code is you have to pull. Which is so counter to the web, I feel like. The justification for it at the time was this is what games developers do. Like because they have a game loop. But you can adapt one to the other. Oh yeah. Not the other way around, at it, least not with other like, if you want to adapt this API design to an event driven, you have to pull and figure out the diffs. If you had an event-driven API, you could decide to put it in a global state object and just pull the state object. Yes, exactly. And or, or you could just you know, have both be available, right? Like, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I think this was a real mistake in the design of the system. Um, Especially yeah. because like, this doesn't give you a way, I think, to figure out what has changed from the previous Joypad state. I think no, you, you have, have to, to figure it out yourself. You would have to maintain that state. So it's like I, I gain nothing. I feel like absolutely. Uh, there is a, a draft spec for this, um, where you have an event button down, and, oh. and you also have like uh, like gamepad or, or change like a change event or similar. There, it's, it's sort of taking a lot of hints from the pointer API. Yeah. Uh, so. But of yeah. course, that isn't real yet. Is it implemented? It's not implemented yet. There's a draft spec for it. I mean, there might, it might actually be behind a flag at this point mm. by the time this video goes out. It's something we're working on. So you, even in that case, you would, so this would be the code. Like yeah. You've got your, because you, you, you might have some game pads connected at the start, so you would listen to those. And then you do the, you get this gamepad connected event, which is an event that already exists. That, that isn't anything new. And then uh, you, know, you can start listening to, to that particular gamepad, the various events on that. But can't do that today. So. Should we take a look at the code that we use in our slide deck? Yeah. This is what I was aiming for. This is slightly different to the, the code you had. Yeah. I wanted to make a, a system like this where you map buttons to actions. Map buttons to, functions. to actions. And this is you know, where I wanted to go for this, this presentation. So button 0 is next, and button 3 is previous. Just so happens to map to something friendly on here. Yeah. So let's do that then. I'm going to have an async function. Mm. Which uh, th this was in your implementation as well. I like this. I like this model. Uh, like you said, knowing that something has changed is not information it gives you. So that is something we need to track. There we go. Keeping got our, our array there for that. Basically, one index for each button. No. Ooh. Hold on to it. There's a, there's a difference from from your implementation. Uh, but this while true, you had this in yours as well. Now this is a bit of code that would have terrified me. In um, like before a async functions, yes. But I find myself using while true quite a lot now. Yes, I, yeah. I'm quite a big fan. I, there's a lot of patterns. Like I often find myself using it with set timeout or other events where I just like I await an event in a for loop. Yes, absolutely. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing here. Um, I always uh, well, I, I tend to start with while true now, and then afterwards go, would this be more readable? As a for loop or as something else. Yeah, because and say what you want. A while true loop is very simple to understand. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, OK, I'm going to keep going around in this thing. And then you just wait for things in that loop. And it's actually, I think, a very intuitive way to, I, I, to describe I think so the well. intent. Absolutely. We saw this before. Uh, this is, we're going to get an array of game pads. And we're going to get rid of those stupid gaps in the array Yeah. with, with your old filter. The spec says get game pads should return an array. Doesn't in Chrome, you can tell you that much. So <laughs> hopefully they fix that at some point. What I'm going to do here is if that length is 0, there are no game pads. There are no game pads. So we're going to wait for one to be connected. Yeah. So this is something where I often have an await next event helper function, which just takes a string for the event name, and you just wait for the next event of this name. Yes. And it's I'm using once true here. And this is something that I. I very rarely find once useful because normally uh, I don't I don't so much want just one of those events. I want one that's specifically relevant to this yes. item or whatever. Like I see this often with transition end, for example, where like you actually want only one transition end event, but you need to make sure it has the right event target before you deregister because of bubbling and such. Yeah. yeah, but that's not the case here. So once true, actually, it rarely in a rare circumstance, is great. And the reason, like, if you miss off that once true. 
You leak? Yeah, that's the problem. It's going to work, but you're going to be leaking memory because it's actually not a, not a breaking leak. Like no. you just you just you're just consuming memory for no reason. Exactly. And it's just one closure, so maybe it adds up though, especially in a while through. <laughs> a absolutely. It, yeah, exactly. And then another await. And this is a case where you could just do new promise request animation frame. Uh, you could, but it, again, that, mm. I feel like the, it's more likely that we you know, change the arguments that get sent to something. Yeah, no, like, I, I wouldn't trust it. Yeah. So um, this is basically saying, like, await the next frame. And this is actually, as a side note, I think quite interesting, because this pattern can be iffy if you're actually talking about DOM manipulations or animations, because it is still a microtask boundary. Yes, but it's still going to be before the next visual it render. Can. Yeah, I but I think like, there can be ordering issues, maybe. So I, I would with other frames, maybe. But it's all it's like well, well I like it. I yeah. Unless the browser's busted, like, <laughs> it, it, it is it is spec to happen before the next yeah. frame because it will always do that micro task tag, micro task checkpoint inside the, the render steps as well. And now we're going to go through our game pads. We know that we've got more than one, at least one. At least one. Oh, yes, true. At least one. And this is similar to the bit of code you had before. I'm going to go through the buttons and find out like whether they're pressed or not. Yeah. Looks this one isn't a proper array, so mm -hmm. we're fine. Turns out, <laughs> okay, thank you. So now we've got a state which is an array of booleans. And again, here in dot buttons, every button has a fixed position in that array. Uh, yes. Yes. That's On true. this specific game. But path. and they don't disappear. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And we're going to see if a button has changed. So we've got our, our, our last state, look, looking that up for this game pad. Right. This, this is, so this is a slightly different version from the one you wrote, because this will support multiplayer slides, which we have done before. We have done that before, right. actually, so, yeah. Um, and then if we don't have a last state, I'm just going to create a lot of false things. An area of the same length, length but where everything is false because you don't have a last state yet. Yeah. OK. Yeah. I mean, you could probably use an empty array and rely on undefined, but uh, whatever. This is, this, you know, if you're writing TypeScript, this is maybe going to be happier about it. <laughs> so, And then, yeah, we're just going to go through all of them buttons. I love dot entries. Mm. This is something mm. I find myself using a lot. Yeah, it gives you an iterable where you get the, the index, index and the value. And the value, and you can destructure them like that. I like this. I use it a lot. Was the button pressed previously, going into our last state? That's why we needed the index. There it is. And then there we go. Like, is the button pressed? And was it not pressed before? And this is another thing you would need to deal with with the GamePad API, is that if you hold the button down, then you're going to get many frames where the button is pressed. And that's the thing. Because you're pulling yourself every frame, you don't want to trigger next slide on every frame, because it's actually quite hard to press the button for just one frame. Yes. So we would check. This is basically a little little threshold that you like. Yeah. So it's just like it, so we're essentially edge detection, I we're guess. recreating button down is yeah. the event we're, we're creating there. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to our listeners, one for that button. Look at you with optional chaining. Yeah. I did actually have a separate if statement for this, and then I went, hang on. Hang on. Nice. We've got modern JavaScript, so that's that's saying, like, if that exists, call it. If it doesn't exist, do doesn't matter. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't error either. And then we save the state. And that's it. And what I like about this code is that if I put this on the page, like, it, it's going to be doing that thing every frame. Which is kind of expensive, but that only happens once there's a gamepad connected. Yeah, which is nice because it, it it's just going to wait at that you know waiting for a gamepad to connect. Otherwise. So yeah, if you don't have a gamepad plug in at all, that that while true loop every frame will just stop running because it will wait for a gamepad connected, which will never happen. Yes, and similarly, if you disconnect all your gamepads, it will then you know that array of gamepads is going to come down back to zero, and it will pause the raft loop. And I guess what we're saying is the Joy-Con. It's just a gamepad. It literally shows up as a normal gamepad. Yeah. In you can use a PlayStation controller, Xbox controller, you know, uh, PS4, PS5. Like that, that was the change from like the, the bad old days. Like the, the, the Wiimote was a special thing that yeah. the browser didn't understand, that the operating system didn't understand. You needed to get special drivers for it. Bluetooth, Bluetooth mate. And I don't know if you have a slide for this. Uh, no, this is the last slide. <laughs> you, I also, I don't know how, but I made it rumble. Oh, yes. So th that is only in Chrome. There, oh, interesting. There is, there's there's a, a kind of extension to the spec, which is in Chrome uh, as, as a way of like, uh, you, you can iterate over the um, haptic features of the gamepad. Right. And you can tell them to do their haptic thing. Like uh, we said. You can do that on, on this, and that works. You can do it on the PlayStation, that works as well. And do you know if we have, because these also have 
gyroscopes and accelerometers in there. Is those and those extension as well? Those there is a spec for it. Oh, cool. The, it, it, in the same extension spec, I think that the Rumble stuff is in. It has yeah the, the access to the gyroscope, uh, access to touchpad style stuff. Ah, okay. I don't think that has an implementation yet, but they are but thinking it's spec, of this. So that's good. Yeah, yeah, it's written down, uh, and along with this like new event system, which would save us all of this that code. Really, that would really level up, I think, um, game development on the web. So yeah, if you want to impress people, <laughs> so, so sometimes like it's great when when you put so much effort into an episode, and like you finally get the first comment on the video, and it's like, oh, I wonder if they've noticed the amazing animations I've done, and the comment is, Joy-Con, how? And you're like, <laughs> so how? There you go. We don't need to talk about it ever Anymore. again. All right, um, let's not cut, but that was great. Um, can we get some thumbnails on this one? Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> we are out of here. All right, let's cut.